Life Strength and Health Podcast, Episode 62. Welcome, everyone. This is Life Strength and Health Podcast with Jamal and Kim, where it's our mission to educate, empower, and inspire you to live healthier. So let's dive into the show. Hi, Kim and Jamal here, and welcome to another episode of Life Strength and Health Podcast. I'm Kim, and I'm joined with Jamal. Greetings, everyone. And uh, peace and blessings. Yes. And this is episode number 62. If you've noticed, we have not posted a podcast episode in a while. Yeah, and it's been a long while. Yes. And we are back in full effect and ready to serve you and deliver some information that will hopefully, uh, you know, inspire you to live healthier. This is part three of our fat series all yes. about the fats. Uh, part one was just like the foundation of fat, the misconceptions out there regarding fat and uh, why it's so necessary in our diet. Yeah. And uh, part two was the fats that you should avoid. And in this episode, we are going to dive into one of the most important parts is the fats you should consume. <laughs> so um, if you haven't had a chance to listen to part one and part two, I will list those links in the show notes. So just go to lifestrengthandhealth.com forward slash 62 and you could get access to those previous episodes and make sure you check them out. Yeah, we're just going to continue with this because it's very, very important that people understand uh, fats, why they are so important, as well as the ones that we need to stay away from. You know, fats have gotten such a bad rap for so long. It's very difficult for people to wrap their minds around fat actually being good. The industry did a really good number on us Mm -hmm. mentally to uh, control like our perception on fats. And I'm still seeing this with a lot of our clients when we recommend for them to eat fats. They're skeptical, you know, and they're scared. And the, the first question that everyone asks me is they either say, well, You know, I'm trying to lose weight. You know, isn't this fat going to make me fat? Mm -hmm. And then they're a little nervous because they want to know, is the fats going to increase their cholesterol and blood pressure and give them cardiovascular problems in doing that? So that's a subconscious thing. So what I notice is that when we revisit their eating, they're still, you know, minimizing their fat consumption or they'll have like a little bit of fat and they think that that's good. Like just taking a little flaxseed oil or popping uh, your omega uh, once a day, they think, well, I'm getting in, I'm getting in the good fats and they think that that's enough, not really knowing how much fat we really need. So looking for, go ahead. Also with children, a lot of parents say that their children are never satiated and of course they're worried about their children becoming overweight and a lot of children are deficient in fats in their diet as well so yeah yeah you know what why why you on that I just want to say this really quickly uh breast milk is over 50% fat it's mostly fat so we go from feeding our children a predominantly fat diet And then when we put them on uh, foods, the first thing that we give them is carbohydrates. So we'll give them the different cereals that are on the market or we'll give them fruit, you know, the different types of baby food. We we all of a sudden get them on starches and carbs and fruits and we get them off of the fats. Like instantly they go from a very high fat diet to a very low Mm -hmm. fat diet. And, you know, the fat is the number one nourishment for the brain. So when there's cognitive issues or developmental issues and we don't know why, I think that that's a big part of it. The fact that we um, go from one extreme diet to, to the next. So for the children, fat is a very, very important part of uh, their diet. And right now I'm working on the book and uh, in the book, One of the things that I touch on is this whole fat phenomenon. And just to share with you, this is going to be in the book with our daughter, Saora. When we begin to increase her fats, like we, you know, tremendously increased her fats, we both of us noticed almost an instant boost and her cognitive abilities, like instantly. And Mm -hmm. and this is not an area that she struggled in. She was never 
uh, like ADD. She never had any type of concentration issues or developmental issues as far as all of the standard testing. She was fine and just, you know, visually from what we see, she was fine. But mm-hmm. in, in spite of that or despite that, when we increased her fats, we noticed a huge difference in her cognitive development. So it's not one of those things where it's like your child has ADD or something like that or some type of developmental issue and now it's like, oh, well, they're not getting enough fats. No, you could think that everything is totally fine and there is no issues, but there still could be because we never would have, you know, just did this because we felt like something is wrong. And a lot of times we only do things um, when we feel like something's wrong. So it's easy for this to to get missed. Right. Uh, So in us doing that, we saw that by us not giving her enough fats and not having her on a higher fat diet, that that was actually taking away from her overall development. If we never would have caught that, like she would have, you know, most likely continue to progress and do well, but never maxing out on her true potential just because she just didn't have the the nutrition to pull from. That was an excellent point. And uh, right now we're going to segue into our organic food for thought. And, you know, sugar raises cholesterol and saturated fats do not. So a diet high in carbohydrates raises your sugar levels, which then raises your insulin levels. And elevated sugar and insulin levels damages your arteries. So your body must then use cholesterol to patch up your damaged arteries. Yeah, think about that. We've been taught that, you know, eating... Uh, the fats and the fatty foods are going to raise our cholesterol, uh, but it's uh, it's really not that. It's the opposite. It's the carbs uh, that are actually raising our cholesterol. So that that's a, a different spin there. A lot of people don't realize that the body uses cholesterol for for many things, but one of the things that it uses cholesterol is to patch up. Uh, damaged arteries. So it's not that the fat is clogging the arteries like you have the fat in your arteries because that is your your body's method of healing. That's what your body uses to patch up the damage. So uh, for people that have high cholesterol and you're looking to naturally lower your cholesterol, then you should put your attention on the sugars, the carbohydrates in your diet because most people, they're focusing on the animal products. They're Mm -hmm. focusing on the fats in their diet and they eliminate those things, but they still stay on the starches and their levels don't come down or at least as much as they thought that it would. So they have to stay on medication and a lot of people permanently have to stay on medication because they don't get it right with their diet. So I think that's a powerful uh, food for thought segment. Yeah, definitely. So now let's dive into this episode. Yes. So I think that an important thing to talk about when we speak about the good fats is why fats. I think that's really important because there's a lot of controversy uh, behind fats. For a long time, uh, everyone was doing the whole low fat movement. You know, everyone was still doing it. Yeah, I mean, they're, (laughs) they're still doing it, but It's more extreme now because now there is a no fat movement. You know, Mm -hmm. before it was low fats and now it's a no fat. So we're starting to see a trend of a lot of people that are completely eliminating all fat from their diet. I think that in the beginning, you're going to feel good because most people are consuming the bad fats. So when you come off all the fats, you're feeling good. But then eventually you're going to take a dip because your body absolutely needs fats. When we talk about uh, food groups, we have I'm going to name the three major food groups. It's carbohydrates, it's proteins and it's fats. So fats is an actual food group. So just as much as you need protein in your diet, you need carbohydrates in your diet, you need fats in your diet. It needs to be a part of your diet. And when you really look at deficiencies, right, there definitely can be a protein deficiency. You can be deficient in proteins. Uh, You 
can be deficient in fats. Like there is fat deficiencies, especially when we talk about the essential fatty acids. You can definitely be deficient in the good fats, uh, but we never hear about carbohydrate deficiencies. You sure like don't. that is rare. <laughs> yeah, you don't hear about carbohydrate deficiencies. So I get it. If someone wants to go on a a, a, a a no carb diet, even though we we do need carbs, but I I, I get it. Uh, but the fats, no, I think you're going to run into far more trouble going on a no fat diet as opposed to a uh, a no carb diet. So one of the things that is important with fat is a uh, vitamin and antioxidant absorbance. Like it actually helps your body to absorb fat soluble vitamins. So vitamins like A, D, E, K, those are all fat soluble vitamins and your body needs fat in order to properly absorb those vitamins. So when you're on a low fat diet or you're not consuming enough fat, you're really cutting off your body's ability to really utilize and absorb your A, D, E, and K, right? And uh, you get full nutrition from fat. A lot of people don't associate fat with nutrition, but no, fat does have nutrition. One of the things that uh, people look at as unhealthy are uh, egg yolks. A lot of people... Uh, got away from the yolks. No one eats the yolk anymore. Everyone eats the, the, uh, egg, whites. the egg whites. Mm-hmm. You know, in restaurants, it's just egg whites. You can buy just egg whites. But the truth of the matter is that uh, the traditional egg yolks that you find in the average grocery store, those are not the best uh, egg uh, sources for you because of the way that the factory farming industry, what they do to the chickens and what they do to the eggs overall. But if you're talking about a pasture raised egg in the egg yolk, it's full of vitamin A, it's full of beta carotene, vitamin E, and omega-3. So you're going to get nutrition, you're going to get life force from that. So uh, you you get a full spectrum of nutrition. It also helps to, to balance your hormones overall. What fat does is it turns off your hormones that cause you to crave food, your hunger hormones. That's what fat does. It turns those off and it also turns on your satiation, your satiation hormones. So a lot of times uh, people will eat and they still feel hungry or they they don't feel quite full or you, you eat and then you're hungry a little while later. And that's because you didn't have enough fat in your diet. One of the things that we're taught in our society is that you need to snack. You know, people are hungry. You, you want to snack all mm-hmm. the time. But I'm from the camp that believes that snacking too much is actually not a good thing because it throws your body off. First of all, your digestive system needs a break. And two, you, you keep constantly going on this roller coaster with uh, your insulin levels. And that's not a good thing. So if you're snacking, that means that your diet isn't balanced. Because if you eat a properly balanced diet in one meal, that's going to sustain you for a very long time. And you're not going to need to come back and eat. Children are different. You know, they're growing. We got to feed their bodies. So yeah, they're going to snack. They're going to eat more often. But as an adult, you shouldn't be snacking so much. So if you find that you're a snacker, it means that something is out of balance. Then uh, another thing is it actually helps your body to burn fat. A lot of people think that fat makes you fat, but fat doesn't make you fat. Sugar is what actually makes you fat. So you can become fat adaptive and teach your body to burn fat as fuel and the fat on your body by actually consuming fat. Another reason why you want to consume fat is because it actually helps to build muscle because uh, fat prevents muscle wasting. So that is a good thing for people that are trying to build muscle. And I'll tell you this, when I weight train really hard, I take mega doses of the omegas uh, after workouts, I definitely notice that I'm not as sore the next day. So a lot of times people are quick to take protein 
after you work out, which is a good thing, it's a great thing, but they don't add fats to it. And in my protein shakes, I always include a little bit of fat, some MCT oil or some coconut oil, and uh, and I take the omegas, and I find that that really helps with me building my muscle. And also, when you cook with fat, it helps uh, your food so that uh, you prevent uh, loss of nutrients when you're cooking. So these are all the powerful reasons why you need to consume fats. Yes. So the question is, what type of fats? What, what type of fats <laughs> you should be having? Before we told you what fats you need to stay away from, and I know that that was shocking for a lot of people to find out a lot of these fats that they shouldn't be consuming. So Mm -hmm. now I think it's really important to talk about the fats that we can have. And uh, the way that we're going to do this is that we're going to break it down. We're going to talk about the the vegetation, the vegetable uh, sources of fats, and then we'll go into the animal sources of fats. Not all animal fats are bad. They, that animal fats get a bad rap. Mm-hmm. When in all actuality, most of the, and as you saw in the last podcast, most of the vegetable fats and oils are the ones that's really bad for us. So uh, we're going to get into the good of both worlds. Okay? okay, let's do it. So the first fat we're going to cover are avocados. And avocados, they have both fat-soluble and water-soluble vitamins. They contain fiber, potassium, and folic acid, which is great for pregnant women. Yeah, and you know what? If there was a top top food, top five foods of all times list, I would definitely put avocados on it. So packed with nutrients. Like mm-hmm. when you consume avocados, you'll notice a difference in your skin. You'll notice a difference in your, your hunger. Like your health begins to transform when you incorporate avocados into your diet. A lot of times people try to stay away from avocados because they think they're fatty and it's going to cause them to gain weight. And don't get me wrong, it's calorie dense. So if you're going crazy with, you know, avocados and you're also consuming a lot of other things like the uh, the carbs and the starches and things like that, you can gain weight. But if you're monitoring those things and you're eating avocado every day can actually help you to lose weight. So I love avocado. A lot of people don't like avocado. And I can tell you um, from personal experience, I didn't like avocado yeah, either, me either at all. <laughs> but when we really found out like how nutritious it was, we trained our palate to actually like avocado. You can train your palate to like certain foods. So just because you don't like something, it doesn't mean that it has to stay that way. So once we learned how nutritious avocados were, we started that process of training our palates to like avocado. And the way that we started to do that was we started making uh, chocolate puddings. With the avocado, you take a very ripe avocado, uh, you add some uh, some cocoa powder or some raw cacao powder and some uh, maple syrup and stevia. Coconut or, oil. Or, yeah, and, and some coconut oil and you put it in a food processor and you blend it up and it literally tastes like a chocolate pudding. And we fooled a lot of people that uh, didn't know it was avocado and didn't even like avocado when they, they ate it and didn't complain about it. So um, that's how we really started introducing it into our diet. And then from there, we opened our palate up and started consuming it in other ways. Mm-hmm. Okay, the next fat we're going to touch on is coconut oil. And coconut oil, when you consume it, it should be cold pressed, unrefined, and organic. And coconut oil is very easy for the body to turn into energy. And in terms of gut health, when uh, we talk about gut health, it's great at fighting bad bacteria, which improves immunity. And it's also a great brain food. And coconut oil helps to improve our memory and brain function as well. And it helps to reduce inflammation. And you can use coconut oil on your skin, your scalp and your hair, as well as rinse with it in your mouth to detoxify your gums. Yeah, I really, really like coconut oil. And the interesting thing about it is not too long ago, coconut oil was looked at as a bad thing. People frowned upon it. No one wanted it. They said it was going to raise 
your cholesterol levels. And now, as more and more research is being done about coconut oil, now it's like one of the best uh, things that you can do. Everyone wants to take coconut oil or use it. And uh, if you're online, you see all of these memes going around <laughs> <No>. now <laughs> saying that coconut oil is the solution to everything. Like, I'll, ju- I'll just rub <laughs> coconut oil on it, you know, rub <laughs> coconut oil on my day. Like, so now it's these memes going around with a thousand uses of coconut oil. So I think that's a good thing. That's a positive thing that people are really starting to see the power of uh, coconut oil. So that is something you definitely want to consume and um, keep in your diet. And it's a high heat oil, or should I say a medium high heat oil. So uh, coconut oil, 350 degrees. You can uh, cook at that temperature with with coconut oil very easily. um, So it has a high heat heat threshold. Yes. And the next fat we're going to discuss is olive oil. And olive oil is great as an antioxidant and is very good for the skin. It's high in polyphenols and vitamin E. It's great for cardio health and is good to use to fight against inflammation. Yeah, we've mentioned this before. Very important that you're buying the right olive oil. So you want to make sure that your olive oil is cold pressed. You want to make sure that it's extra virgin, just like your coconut oil. You want to check and see if it has a harvest date. You want to check all of these things and make sure that you're getting a good quality Uh, olive oil. Most likely, if you're spending less than $10 for your olive oil, you're not getting a good quality. So you want to make sure that you spend the extra money and make sure that you're getting a good quality olive oil. It's heat sensitive. So if you're using it for lower heat preparation and baking and things like that, it's fine. Uh, 320 degrees is the uh, heat threshold for uh, olive oil. So if you're doing things more than that, you definitely don't want to use it. As a rule of thumb, I generally tell people just to consume it raw in your salads and things like that or mix it into your foods afterwards because uh, what happens is when it gets uh, too hot, it becomes rancid and you're losing all of the health benefits and you're actually turning it into something toxic. Yeah, and like Jamal said, all olive oils are not the same. And in episode 61, we listed some recommended companies to purchase your olive oil. And I listed that in the show notes pages. So just go to lifestrengthandhealth.com forward slash 61 to get a list of those recommended olive oil companies. So the next oil that or fats that we're going to discuss is nuts and seeds. So this can be flax seeds, chia seeds, walnuts, and macadamia nuts. These are great for brain food, digestion, heart health, energy, and metabolism. It's great for strong bones as well. And flaxseed oil, avocado oil, and walnut oil are best consumed raw. Yeah, so the nuts and the seeds is really, really tricky because it can be great for your health or it can actually be poor for your health. And I'll, I'll tell you why. The the uh, seeds and the oils that Kim just mentioned, those are really high in the good fats. So if you're going to consume it, I recommend definitely including those particular oils into your diet because you're going to get uh, the omegas in your diet and just the good fats and nutrients in your diet. Uh, but the problem is that nuts are very calorie dense and they can disrupt your digestion. So a lot of people don't know this, but a serving size of nuts is about 10. You know, so if you're eating almonds, you're having about 10 almonds, 10 cashews. If you're having um, something like Brazil nuts, you're only having two or three. And a lot of times people go way overboard when they're consuming these nuts. Nuts are very calorie dense. And uh, people will eat a whole bag of nuts in one sitting. (laughs) And uh, just know that if you're consuming an entire bag, I guarantee you, if you add up the calories, you're probably consuming about between 1,000 and 2,000 calories in that one meal, depending on the bag size. And that's a, a day of calories for the average person. So you have to be very careful with your nuts. A handful of nuts or seeds is a good rule of thumb. I don't even necessarily recommend eating them as a snack. I recommend using them to highlight your dish, to add them to, to something that you're already eating. Add it to your salad, add it to your cereals. 
or something like that to just boost up the nutrition and get the benefits of it without just sitting there and eating nuts because you're going to get yourself in trouble. And then from these different nuts and seeds, they make things like flax seed oil, walnut oil. They do avocado oil, but that's coming from the avocados, uh, not from the actual seed. And uh, with those particular types of oils, you want to consume them raw. You don't want to add any heat to a walnut or flaxseed oil. Yes. So that is the conclusion of our vegetable fats, right? Yes. So now let's dive into the animal fats. Right. So when it comes to animal fats, you know, they get a a really bad rap, but not all animal fats are bad. It depends on the source that you're getting your animal fats from. One uh, animal food that's really known for having the good oils is fish. And it's very important where you're getting your fish from uh, because you have two types of fish. You have wild caught fish. That's fish that you're going to get from a river, a uh, a lake or the ocean and those wild caught fish are high in the good fats that your body needs and is a very important part uh, of your diet and your brain food but when it comes to uh, factory farmed fishing the factory farmed fish is some of the worst food that you can put in your body the nutrition is completely different than its counterpart And you want to absolutely stay away from uh, farmed fish, farm-raised fish you want to stay away from. It's not high in omega-3. It's high in omega-6. The omega-3 is very low, and we shouldn't have a diet high in omega-6. So you definitely want to stay away from that. But when you're consuming uh, wild-caught fish, you're going to get the good things that your body needs. And the type of the types of fish are important too. You want to try to go for the smaller fish. The smaller fish, uh, they have very low mercury levels. So uh, one really good fish to consume is wild caught salmon. And that's, or salmon from uh, Alaska. You want to do the Alaska wild caught salmon. Sardines are very high on the list. And, uh, If you're going for tuna, I know a lot of people um, like tuna. I would go for the light uh, chunk tuna if you're eating uh, tuna on a a regular basis. Albacore tuna is fine, but if you're eating it uh, daily or or weekly, you want to go for for the lighter tuna. And any of the small uh, fish, flounder, things like that are, are good. Trout. That is a a lake fish, so that's not going to have any uh, mercury, and that has good fats in it as well. So uh, all of those are good. Another uh, really good uh, fat are eggs, and not just any egg. You don't want to do uh, farm, uh, factory farmed eggs. Those are the ones that... uh, is a reason why you want to stay away from the yolks, but I just say stay away from them all together. If you're going to consume an egg, it needs to be fresh from a farm, and that way you know that you're getting antioxidants and you're getting nutrients. So those are good fats. And despite what we hear, another really good animal fat is actually butter, right? So we're not talking about regular butter. If you're Buying factory farm butter, if you're just going to the grocery store and buying that butter, you definitely want to stay away from that because those cows are grain fed. And all of these things that we hear about dairy and the reasons why we should stay away from dairy, it's really coming from these uh, factory farmed dairies that are fed grains and fed hormones and um, antibiotics and it's pesticides in their food. Those uh, types of uh, dairy products we want to stay away from. But if you're consuming pasture raised, uh, grass fed, uh, particularly raw butter, that is uh, abundant with nutrients, vitamin A, D, K. It has the uh, omegas in it as well. And you can cook with it, use it as a spread. It has a heat threshold of 350 degrees. So raw butter is definitely something that is nutritious for you. And then along the lines of butter, 
there's also a oil called ghee. Ghee is really a process that they do with butter where they boil off all of the things that people would consider bad about uh, butter. Like some people react to whey and certain things in uh, butter that ghee doesn't contain. So people that are lactose intolerant or have dairy sensitivities, they usually can tolerate ghee with no problem. And the... Um, with ghee, the nutrition is locked in even more. So you have more nutrition because it's concentrated and it has a very long shelf life. You don't have to uh, keep it in the refrigerator and it has a very high heat threshold, uh, 480 degrees. So you can definitely cook with it, you can fry with it and it's very stable, full of nutrition. I definitely recommend ghee uh, in your diet. I think it's a very um, important good fat source that people should consume. Yes. And uh, those are the main things as far as like uh, animal products are concerned. In regards to fish, I just want to name a couple. The Alaskan and Pacific salmon, Pacific sardines, really good for the skin, immune system, fertility, weight loss, and muscle recovery. So uh, we covered the, the good fats from uh, <laughs> vegetation and then we cover the good fats for animal right and and just as far as like how do you consume these things I think that you should try to consume some fat with every single meal no matter what meal it is breakfast lunch dinner snacks it should be some form of fat with all of your meals I want you to try that try to consume fats with all of your meals and see how you feel mm -hmm. you know most people when they start to do that they actually feel better and you notice that uh, you stay satiated longer when you consume these good fats. Yeah, definitely. So that is the conclusion of this episode. Yes. Of eating the good fats. Hopefully uh, you find this information useful and you apply it. And let us know, you know, leave us a comment, you know, on our Facebook page or on the show notes page and just let us know how it's turning out for you and what diff changes do you see in your health and in your energy and in your hormones? Are you satiated? How is your skin looking? Um, because it definitely this is a game changer. It's going to be a game changer for a lot of people. And this helped our clients, uh, so many of our clients. Yeah. And, and being that this is such a huge topic. Um, we will be talking about fats again. I'm trying to get, I mentioned it before, I'm trying to get some specialists on the show, uh, some scientists in the fat area or, or doctors that specialize in, you know, fat. Uh, so we can uh, continue this conversation, dive in a little bit more. You have to keep hearing it, keep learning about it so that you can become, become comfortable and learn how to balance your diet out the right way. Yes. And for the show notes pages where you can download this episode, and any other things that we mentioned in this podcast, just go to lifestrengthandhealth.com forward slash 62 to get direct access to the show notes pages. And before we go, let's take a minute to hear from our sponsors. Let's face it, we are living in a world set up for us not to be healthy. And with the overabundance of health information available, it's so easy to get overwhelmed and confused on which path to take, which leads to inaction and not making health a top priority. Well, that can all change. We are Life Strength and Health, the number one center in New Jersey for helping you to detoxify and address your digestive system challenges. We provide support, accountability, guidance, education. We will be with you every step a way to help simplify this process and help you to reach your health goals. So if you're ready to take action, if you're ready to make your health a top priority, then visit us at lifestrengthandhealth.com or give us a call at 1-800-503-7127 and book your consultation today. Don't live in the New Jersey area. Don't sweat it. We can work with you virtually. So visit us at lifestrengthandhealth.com or give us a call at 1-800-503-7127 and book your consultation or virtual consultation today. We want to say thank you for listening to the show and for access to the show notes pages, more podcast episodes, blog content, as well as more information about our center, Life Strength and Health, then just visit us at lifestrengthandhealth.com. Until next time, live healthier.